Hello and welcome to a discussion on recording manufacturing costs using the standard cost method that also records variances. After watching this video, you'll be able to record the flow of manufacturing cost to inventory at standard cost using variance calculations. You will record variances in the accounting records and close out variances to inventory accounts to adjust the total company cost to actual cost. This method is used by large companies that manufacture many different products on many different production lines. It is not cost effective to track costs to each product where costs are being made. The company generally has an integrated accounting system that records cost at the standard cost of making each product. Variances are included in the entries that are made to record the flow of product cost. Let's do a quick review of the flow of manufacturing cost. Direct materials are purchased, put in the direct materials warehouse, and moved to the production line as products are made. Direct labor works and manufacturing overhead costs are incurred. Then all three product costs are recorded to work in process. The cost of completed products is moved to finished goods and the cost of finished goods is moved to cost of goods sold when products are sold. The amount recorded to work in process is always the standard estimated amount of quantity of units made multiplied by the estimated cost to make one unit. At the end of the period, the inventory accounts and the cost of goods sold have a balance that is estimated or at standard. The standard and record the variance method records variances directly into the accounting records. The word variance means a difference between the standard estimated amount and the actual amount. The difference in standard and actual cost is caused by one of two things. The cost or the amount paid for each quantity was different than expected or the quantity used was different than expected. Variances are computed for all four product costs. Companies that use the standard and record the variance method have computer systems that do the variance computations that are necessary to record the journal entries to track the movement of cost. The variances recorded in the accounting records are either favorable or unfavorable. A favorable variance occurs when the actual cost is less than estimated cost. The standard cost method records cost to work in process at the estimated amount and inventory must then be adjusted to the actual cost. An unfavorable variance occurs when the actual cost is more than the estimated cost. The standard cost method records amounts at the standard cost and more cost must be added to get cost equal to the actual amount. An unfavorable variance is recorded with a credit Excuse me, a favorable variance is recorded with a credit and an unfavorable variance is recorded with a debit. Direct materials purchased is recorded with the same debit to direct materials and credit to accounts payable. The inventory account always changes by the standard or estimated amount and the credit is always an actual amount. The variance is recorded for the difference and unfavorable variances are recorded with a debit and favorable variances are recorded with a credit. AQ times SP is the standard estimated amount on the right and AQ times AP is the actual amount on the left. Direct materials moved to the production line used to make products are recorded with the same debit to work in process and credit to direct materials. The inventory account always changes by standard or estimated amount. The credit is always an actual amount. The difference in the actual and standard is the variance. Unfavorable variances are recorded with a debit and favorable variances are recorded with a credit. All the amounts are stated in the variance calculation. Direct labor works and the product cost is moved out of the expense and into work in process. The inventory account always changes by the standard or estimated amount. The credit is always an actual amount. The difference in actual and standard is the two variances. Unfavorable variances are recorded with a debit 
and favorable variances are recorded with a credit. All amounts are calculated on the variance computation. Manufacturing overhead costs incurred are moved out of the expense and into work in process. The inventory account always changes by the standard or the estimated amount. The credit is always an actual amount. The difference in actual and standard is the two variances. Unfavorable variances are recorded with a debit and favorable variances are recorded with a credit. Let's look at an example with numbers. The variance analysis is used to record the entries for manufacturing cost. The general rule to follow is the inventory account is always recorded at the estimated amount with a debit and the credit is always the actual cost. For the purchase of direct materials, the inventory account, account is recorded at the estimated amount, the AQ times SP. The credit is always recorded for the actual amount, the amount that must be paid to suppliers. The price variance is recorded for the difference in the actual and the estimated amounts. The estimated cost of using materials is recorded with a debit or an increase to work in process. The credit is the actual amount or the one with the A in it. And the variance is recorded for the difference in actual and estimated amounts. Notice that unfavorable variances are recorded with a debit and favorable variances are recorded with a credit. Direct labor is moved to work in process with a debit at the standard cost. The credit is recorded for the actual amount. The rate and efficiency variances are recorded for the difference. Product costs incurred are always recorded at estimated cost with a debit to work in process. Favorable variances are recorded with a credit. Variable manufacturing overhead costs incurred are moved to work in process with a debit at the standard cost. The credit is always recorded for the actual amount. The spending and efficiency variances are recorded for the difference in the actual and estimated amounts. Product costs incurred are always recorded at the estimated cost with a debit to work in process. Favorable variances are recorded with a credit. Fixed manufacturing overhead costs incurred are moved to work in process with a debit at the standard cost, the amount on the far right. The credit is always recorded for the actual amount, the amount on the far left. The budget and volume variances are recorded for the difference in the actual and estimated amounts. Product costs incurred are always recorded at the estimated cost with a debit, an increase to work in process. Notice that unfavorable variances are recorded with a debit and favorable variances are recorded with a credit. After all the journal entries are made to record the cost of manufacturing products, the variance accounts must be moved to adjust the inventory accounts to actual. Inventory accounts were initially recorded at standard. The variance accounts are the difference in estimated and actual. List the variances before going to the next step of closing them out and moving the amounts to inventory accounts. To close out the variances, credit balances must be debited and debit balances must be credited. The price variance is done separately from the other variance accounts. The price variance comes about when purchasing direct materials. The direct materials purchase could still be in the warehouse or left on the production line or part of finished goods or included in products that have already been sold. The price variance is allocated to all four accounts, direct material, work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. The question is how much should be added to each of the four accounts? The other variances only come about as products are being made. As such, these variances are not allocated to the direct materials account because the cost of direct materials sitting in the direct materials warehouse occurs before products are made. The net of the other variances, which is 24200 
must be allocated only to work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold, and not to direct materials. The same question arises. How much should be allocated to each of the three accounts? The variances are allocated based on the percent of the total cost in each inventory and cost of goods sold account. The balances in each T account are listed and the percent of the total is computed. The account balance is divided by the total to get the percent. The direct materials price va variance is allocated to all four accounts and the other variances are allocated only to the three accounts and not to direct materials. Therefore, two separate percent calculations must be done. The price variance is multiplied by the percent for each account to get the amount to adjust each account. The net of all the other variances is allocated to the three accounts based on those percents. Direct materials account is not used for the other variances that occur when products are made because products are made after costs leave the direct materials warehouse. The inventory and cost of goods sold accounts are adjusted by the variance to close out the variance accounts. A debit variance is credited to make the balance go to zero. A credit balance is debited to adjust the variance to zero. Journal entries will, will look similar to this. Closing out the variance account adjust the inventory and cost of goods sold account balances in total to be the actual total cost of the company. Companies using the standard cost and record the variance method do not know the actual cost to make individual products. The profitability of each product is reported using estimated standard cost only. It is critically important that cost sheets that document estimated cost be continuously updated so that the cost of products is as accurate as possible. After viewing this video, you should be able to record the flow of manufacturing cost at standard cost using variances and calculations. Record variances in the accounting records and then close out the variances to inventory accounts to adjust the total company cost to the actual cost. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com and do the practices you learn for examples of each of the things discussed in this video. Then work your practice test, write them out, and check your answers to the answers and explanations provided. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is much appreciated.